Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting day because not only are we talking about one of the most infamous, infamous uh, teen dystopian movies ever. One. We're also joined with a very special guest that you guys have been asking me to do a video with for the longest time. Today, we are joined with none other than Mike Smike. I think you mean Seneca Crane. We're gonna be talking about all the Hunger Games movies today with each other, gathering thoughts, gathering intel before we go see the new Hunger Games movie, which I bet you guys are all getting prepped for as I was by rewatching all the Hunger Games movies. Me and Mike watched all the Hunger Games movies and we're here to tell each other what we think. We're here to battle. We're basically here to do our own Hunger Games. Um, and pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, we're gonna like fight until whoever wins gets to take over the other's channel. Um, so, yeah. And let's celebrate that. And let's celebrate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to look down at you and like realize that you look like that. I keep seeing myself in the corner and I'm like, what's Butch Seneca Crane doing down there? Let's get started with none other than what started it all, the mother freaking Hunger Games. I can't whistle. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Katniss' introduction to the movie? She comes in, and this is where we're getting all the little nitty bits and pieces of her. We're like, this is who are this is who are we're we're following through the movie. This is the protagonist. I feel like it's a good contextual setup, and also shows that she's about her business in District Twelve. She's about her sister, she's about hunting. She said, I love to go in the forest and do a little bit of hunting. And then I love to help my sister out. Like there's like her sister and the hunting. And like, yep, done. That's Katniss. Yeah. And it's like going forward into the movie. I respect that she is so like doing the equivalent of her nine to five. Like she's a protagonist on the side. She's leading the, the rebellion, you know, five to nine. But nine to five, she's hunting and taking care of Prim. I like how when they introduce Katniss, they're also introducing the world. And I'm obsessed with how they show that it's technologically advanced, but also so not. By like showing all this cool technology, but then also these like old ass clothes that they're wearing and shit like that. I think it's so interesting. Like an old ass bath that they're taking, right? Like they have like the bucket and sponge. Like like Katniss is doing the bucket and the sponge and then they're watching a hologram. That's like not fair. Literally, like can you use some of the hologram money to buy like a shower? And maybe we can get some bathtub budget. President Snow, so fucking extra where he's like, I need you all to see me. So it's like, you need the hologram monitors. Be for real. Jumping into when the capital comes in for the reaping, Katniss is like, Prim, you're fine. Like, it'll be fine. She's like, Prim, don't even worry. Your name's in once. I wrote in my notes that she asked Gail how many times your name is in today. And he says 42. And I was like, whoa. For like how many kids are out there, there's definitely not more than a thousand kids there. So like if he's 42, like he's running up the percentage for sure. Which like already bothers me that he doesn't get picked after putting his name in there 42 fucking times. No, I know. Also like later on Katniss tells Prim, she says, try not to take any more food from them. It's not worth putting your name in more times. So it's like, why does Gail have 42 things in there? Is he just like snatching food? He's hungry. Question for the culture. Did he eat? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense that... <laughs> he did physically eat food. But he also ate. Visually, not morally. Mm, okay. You don't agree? I can't say that I've ever been like, yes, Ew. Katniss with Reaping and Prim, when they call Prim's name, K 
Katniss is fucking gagged. She's like doing that face like, because she literally told her several times her name would not be picked. And then Prim, like, honestly, Prim kind of ate because, like, she knew it was going to happen. She knew in her brain, her intuition. But then it also makes me think, maybe she knew in her intuition, maybe she was manifesting. Whoa. She manifested getting raped? Prim definitely manifests her name getting picked. And I stand by that because she says it over and over again. She's like, I'm so worried. I'm so worried. I'm so worried. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because it's like, no, no, you're fine. And then it happens. The thing that gagged me a little bit is how old do you, like, when do you age out of being in the selection? Only children age 12 through 18. That man is not 18. He was like, I want to be, like, I want to be picked. Pick me for real. Oh, he- <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Gail is such a pick me. He deliberately kept taking things from the guards so that his name would be put in 42 times because he's a pick me. Well, if he was so much of a pick me, he should have volunteered when Peter got picked. Yup. When Effie was like, Peter. He should have been like, I volunteer as tribute. When we talked about Katniss clocking into work, Effie clocked in. She was doing outfit, face, hair, general vibe, mahogany. My thing is, is that like, It was obviously 5 a.m. when they were doing the reaping, right? She's decked out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, whoa. (laughs) Did I miss that? It was obviously 5 o'clock in the morning when they were doing the reaping. Mm -hmm. No other town. Like, that is 5 o'clock in the morning sky. Right. I see what you mean. And I feel like she whipped out that purple number because the reaping is like, is that her highlight of the year? This is a question. Mm -hmm. Is... Effie placed in District 12 as a punishment. Did she do something to be placed with the quote-unquote lowest ranked district? Mm. Yeah, because like she she loves the capital. She's like a little party never killed nobody. Right. So she she loves everything about the capital. And I feel like she would be so well placed in like a District 1, District 2 situation where if she like guides the tributes. That's such an interesting point. That's why I want to know who the other, like, guides are for, like, 11, 10, 9. Because, like, I want to know if they're the same vibe as her or if they're, like, if they did something wrong, like you said, to end up in these lower districts. Because she doesn't fit in District 12. So it's, like, why was she picked for District 12? I need to know the law. And if we're going to talk about Effie, you know who we got to talk about. Hamish. Smash or pass? Smash. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Who said that? Smash if he took a shower. Oh! Right. Right. Can we, like, slight sidestep? Can we talk about the shaky cam? Shaky cam within the first movie? Because Hunger Games 1, the shaky cam is crazy. Like, the shaky cam from the start, the shaky cam during the reaping. It's in the next movies, but it's not as severe. It's sort of like the blue filter in Twilight. It's the indie movie effect. Yeah, like, what was the budget? Do we know? Okay, this is what I'm saying. This is what I was... I was watching the movie... And one of my friends was bringing up the budget. And so we get into this whole conversation about the budget and the shaky camera and the really tight shots of everything because they didn't have a budget that they did like for the second movie. So in the second movie, there's grand wide shots, there's pans, there's CGI. It's IMAX. It's IMAX. $500,000 IMAX camera. That's what I'm saying. So in the first movie, it really does strip that all away to make it look like literally like a film a film student made it. Which, we could have made it. Oh, we could have made Hunger Games. We are going to make the Hunger Games. And it doesn't mean, mm-hmm. this is not my way of saying that that means that correlates to bad. I think Mm-mm. it's a really genius way to do it because they had a smaller budget and they're using what they can. So tight shots, shaky camera. It almost gives the effect of a documentary around the yeah. Hunger Games. Because right now we're not talking about the world and the rebellion happening. We're talking about what the Hunger Games is and what it, how it affects people. But I noticed that as well when I was watching it. Very close shots of their faces. It's so close, yeah. It's so close. When you see Effie, you can see the powder on her face. And I don't know if that was purposeful. I think I think it was on purpose. But it's interesting that they, they don't do that in the second one. Theory. I'm thinking maybe that's because in the second movie, since they're victors, we're blurring the line between them and the capital, right? 
they're doing the tour and their view of the capital. Not that it switches, but our view kind of switches because they're getting more and more into being a part of the capital once they're going on the victory tour. And prior we were like, the capital sucks and we hate the capital and they're supposed to be ugly and creepy and weird and look crazy. I have another theory. Maybe because they won, they had better budget for makeup. So she just bought better makeup. <gasps> Let me ask the audience. Let me, did she get the raise when they won? That's not like, does she get paid to do this? Yeah. Like, do the stylists get like paid? Does, does Cesar Millard get paid? Because Hamish won. So he gets paid every month, right. right? Or he gets paid every year. Like, who are the employees? Like, who's the, like, Google of... Mm -hmm. Like, who's the monopoly of it? Is it just snow? Every time there's a technology reference in Catching Fire and Mockingjay, it's like, oh, Beatty built this. Yeah, like, he it's himself like, built is it. Is he the Google? Like, is it Beatty Inc.? Like, where, like who, who's helping him? We're now off the train, and we're going into tribute introduction. Mm -hmm. The interview show with Caesar is really where the game starts for me. I think... He is such an interesting character. Susan Collins, or Suzanne Collins, I feel like did such a good job with these characters because you want to know more about them. It's like, I want to know how he got into that position, like how much control he has over what he says. Because like in the first one, it sounds like he is just interviewing the girls to get the information before they go into the arena. He's done this like 25 times. But then in the second one, he has, it seems like he has more control over the show. Like he cuts the show when the shit starts going south. And then in the Mockingjay ones, like he's all in the like propaganda stuff. Like I want to know how high up in the hierarchy he sits and how much control he has over what he says. And if he picked that hairstyle because... Girl, take that bump it out. Take the bump it out. Don't piss me off. Like give season... Season needs a fade. I also think someone is typing a comment right now screaming at us to read the book because i know no i was <laughs> literally thinking when we were talking about effie and it's like and yet we're not gonna read the book <laughs> <laughs> we're like i wish someone would tell us the lore behind these characters and we're like and by the way we're not reading the books and we never will read the books maybe i will read the books i'm reading mm. wiki and that's what i'm reading peter throwing that like ball like, it's like, you need to show them. You need to show them what you can do. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. Like, and he throws it and they're like, oh. When they literally like stutter backwards and they're like, oh. Kato's like, oh, okay, big man. Like, I they see literally you. are like, oh. Like, oh, District 12 boy can throw. Uh, right. But then it does, it actually is important because he throws something later in the actual games. But anyway, so the second thing I wanted to say was the queen of the universe, Foxface. I'm obsessed with that. It's like they're showing all their skills and she's like, let me match, let me match the cards. Let me play Go Fish real quick. They were like silhouettes of like fruits and veggies. They weren't even like the actual colors of them. Like what is she doing in that scene? It's all silhouettes. Like you can't really tell. It's like leaf. To leaf, berry to berry. How, what am I memorizing? That a berry is a berry? What the fuck were, were so many of them doing in that room? Like she was matching, her, like she was doing her little go fish. Peter was throwing something. Like Rue was in the rafters, just like doing anything. Like they... <sighs> okay, because when you go into Catching Fire, you realize that like, this is actually the point like where people train. It's so important. <laughs> the hunger games it is like Peter's painting on his arm and being like check out check out check out this check this out i'm a tree i'm bark 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 bark, bark. bark. fox mm -hmm. face is playing she's ipad baby rue is up at rue's <laughs> literally suspended from the ceiling fox face is literally playing fucking candy crush she's literally playing fruit ninja she's playing fruit ninja on the big <laughs> screen the katniss is like oh when's it my turn <laughs> this scene she enters the arena. One of the most pivotal moments in cinematic history was to cut the audio and have that eerie, Ugh. eerie sound come Ugh. through to orchest to 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 play out the bloodbath. Like just the sheer like shock of like bang, bang, all these like kids fighting each other, killing each other. 
in an M-rated movie, by the way, I was like, this is kind of vicious for like an M-rated movie. I don't know how they got, how they managed to do that. This again goes into the low budget. Like we're really seeing the closest shots of them when like, mm. but in Catching Fire, you get the full wide pan of what's going on. In budget. In the first one, we're getting like the most it seems like a horror movie to me while I'm watching it. I still believe that Hunger Games does have a very similar formula to a horror movie when I'm watching it. Girl who's scared of everything watches Hunger Games. Exactly. One of my favorite scenes ever is when you just see Peter run away. Peter, yeah. He literally just goes... And I, I get that. Like, I honestly, I get that. I mean, right. Like, I would. So Katniss, as we know, she loves a bow and arrow moment famously and she bow and arrows the apples and they blow up the thing yes and then the guy who was supposed to be guarding the thing Kato's like what happened here then and he's like I don't know like something happened and he just snaps the guy's neck right. and I'm like how is this getting through the age rating on this movie because it's like the the neck snap and crack noise it gave snap, crackle, and pop. The rating on this movie really never made sense to me. Like, the amount of things that we see was really not chill. My question for that is not the age rating. It is the fact that Kato can snap someone's neck with ease. He's supposed to be super strong. And he couldn't climb a tree. End him. End him. Whack him again for me. <laughs> because, like... What do you mean they're chasing Katniss? And they can't get her from a tree. Like, be for real. Or they can't aim. What happened to aiming? Clove has the daggers. She's known for hitting Bull's eye. And she literally, like, they don't have her do... I don't even think she they have her use her daggers. I could not believe it. It was embarrassing. Like, Katniss said, let me sit in this tree. Are you coming to the tree for real? She was like, are you coming to the tree? Are you, are you? <laughs> is any, is anyone coming to the tree these days? They, <laughs> and they came to the tree, but they couldn't go up the tree. Let's talk about Rue. Rue, the story with Rue did numbers for Katniss. It was a PR move. Like, is it bad to say Katniss was doing PR moves by like taking Rue under her wing? Cause it's like, yeah, you're being a nice person, but also like genius move from a PR perspective. Like if I was, Katniss's agent, I'd be like, yep. After, like, Katniss buries Rue, where's the claw? Maybe they were trying to let her do her PR work. Because she does take, she takes a long time. She sets up the flowers. She sings her a song. That's, like, at least 30 minutes to an hour of work. So do you reckon they felt bad? They're like, we'll let you finish, and then we'll come and scoop. Like, scoop you in 10. Seneca was like, this is good for ratings. Capital loves tenderness as much as they love uh the brutal uh gore of it all they also love the love story that's playing out they love mm. you know the the tenderness that katniss shows that's why katniss becomes such a lovable uh girl of the capitals because she didn't kill in the hunger games she only killed if she was being attacked mm. that's such a good point around this point i think when uh, just after Rue dies and like the drums happening with Clove, I'm pretty sure that's when there's the scene of Snow talking to Seneca and he's like, I like you, be careful. Right. I was like, okay. So you like him. So you like him. So you like him. Oh. I see what's going on. The Nightlock Berries, are they potentially one of the most lethal characters in the movie because they killed two people and nearly four? Right. Because they killed Foxface and they killed Seneca. My question is, why so juicy? And I ask myself that every day. Why so juicy? Why, why did you make the berries look so good? Like, they're always wet when they find them. They're not, like, berry... <laughs> <laughs> when Katniss, like... Pulls them out of her pocket. Yeah. And they're all like mushed. I'm like, oh, like those warm berries out of your pocket. Your little like pocket berries. So like, they're going to be like warm cargo pocket berries. She's like, you want to snap? Snap my neck instead. 
<laughs> like, go shoot me. I'm not having your pocket berries, your warm berries. You're insane. And this is where the true, the 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 climax of the movie hits is when they when they try to ingest the berries and Seneca goes, stop, 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 stop. Fine, fine. They're two winners of the 74th annual Hunger Games. He's like, fine. He's unprofessional in that moment. I, I just know when Snow saw that shit, he was like, oh, you're over. You're done. He was like, you should have let them fucking die. Snow could have not killed him in like a visual sense because that hasn't happened before. There hasn't been two winners before, as far as I know, without reading the books. So I feel like at home, the, the people at home will be like, oh, that's so interesting. Like this Hunger Games was so interesting. They had two winners. But then I get why he was pissed off because they rebelled against the capital and won by not dying. So he's like, oh, we need, to, we need to stop that. Final scenes of the movie is Katniss and Peeta winning and Seneca dying. So Seneca walks into the room and he's like, oh, they locked the doors behind me. Oh, there's a bowl of berries here. How interesting. Mmm, how nice of Snow to give me a snack. Like, I'm so hungry right now. And then he's like, oh... I'm going to die. He gives him a lot of berries too. He could have like... One juicy wet berry is enough. I was going to say, the last thing I wanted to say about the first Hunger Games movie is when Peter is fucking around with those fuck ass paints and he's suddenly a rock. We totally missed that. Oh my God. Like where did he get the materials? To be doing that. Did kind they of make shit. a backpack specifically for him? You know how like they put the bow and arrow out for Katniss, right? Like, is he doing this shit without a mirror? And like, how did he blend into the rocks? Like, how did he blend himself? How did he blend at all? Did Hamish send him? Did they sponsor him? Did they send him those tools? Like, like Peter's like, hey guys, I'm dying. And they're like, here's a cake good decorating. They're game. like, here's some fondant. Figure it out. I'm like, you're making me mad. You're making me so mad because it doesn't, like, it never comes back into play Mm -mm. ever in the rest of the movies. Mm -mm. If it had more than two references within the whole entire Hunger Games, I would love that so much. And like the speed with which he does it as well. He's just like sitting in the, he's just sitting in like a corner being like, hey guys, welcome to my channel. Hey guys, today I'm turning myself into a rock. But like, it's not even that he's sitting in a corner. He's sitting on this like exposed rock and he's like trying to hide. So he's like, oh, I need to hide quickly. And I have this stab wound in my leg. Let me paint myself into a rock with like so much detail. Like that would take hours. Not to mention he's also by a water source. Do I have thoughts on Peter? Yeah. Do I think people would not agree with my thoughts? Yeah. Am I going to keep them to myself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that I'm like a Gale, like, fan. I'm just saying, like, Peter gets a lot of good press when I think we could also acknowledge that maybe he flopped a bit. I think he does flop a bit in the first movie. I think his plans were not as great as he thought they were but like i i do recognize that he knows he flopped right so like he knows the only reason why he's alive is because of katniss well and that's why when you go into catching fire which we'll be talking about soon is that he he knows that she saved him the first game so the whole point is to keep her protected through the second games can we talk about catching fire are we allowed are we starting that now This is the beginning of the end, basically. Catching Fire is one of the most iconic, it's one of the most remembered sequels of movie history. Everybody knows it. Like the, how it's shot, I feel, feels so much more all stars, if you, if you know what I mean. Like the movie itself is an event in the sense that the, third quarter quell is an event i thought about that i was thinking about how they up the quality to like not only because they just wanted to make a higher budget movie but also to like again like what you said like go with the idea that like the quarter quells are very important they're Mm -hmm. very important to them and they're like they only happen every 25 years it's like leap year Mm -hmm. or whatever they love it but then also like if i was a capital resident 
I'd be eating that shit up. Like when the third quarter quell comes around, I'd be so like ready for anything. And then when Snow announces that it's like Victor's only, I would have been screaming at the TV. I'd be so excited. I can say with confidence that if I was a like a capital resident, I would be. It would be like my, how say? Because this would, this is their big brother. Like this is their reality TV. Also, not to mention, pretty fast turnaround on seasons. They're just going off of the last Hunger Games that they won, and then they're already producing all stars. I wish. Like, it sounds like I hate Peter. But I was going to say, I wish it was Hamish that went in. (gasps) I feel like that'd be so interesting. I get it, but then I also recognize that, like, I just wouldn't like that as much. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think for me, and this is, like, an issue for me, the fact that the romance between Peter and Katniss is such a big part of the plot. Like, I get why people like that. But for me, I'm like, let's do more revolution. Let's do more revolution, more game. Let's play more game. Less kissy kissy, la la, fun fun, hug, love each other, Katniss Peter. You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean in the sense of that, like, I'm the complete opposite where I was like, I want these two characters to have sex on my screen. Like, no. Like, I needed them to bang. Like, you know how, like, the capital citizens are, like, looking at them on tour and they're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, they're like, they're like, you need to have sex right now. You wanted them to get it on in the arena. Right. They're like, you need to have sex right now. That would be me. That would be me. And it would be me too, but not for Katniss and Peter. For who then? And that's the fanfic that I would write. And I can't give details. But maybe there is two names and one starts with an F. What does the other one start with? I'll let you think about it. And I'll let like the people think about it. If you say Mags... I'm going to lose my mind. No! They do, have, they do share a kiss within the movie. Oh, I... Oh. I wrote that down when like, <laughs> like literally let me, the way I can't open my phone because like it thinks I'm Seneca Crane and I can't fucking <laughs> face ID. No, I literally wrote down. I was like, Max kissing Finnick on the lips? Question mark, question mark. Like, what was that? I don't understand that. I'm in two minds about it. First one, I'm like, she knew she was about to die. She wanted one last kiss from a hot man. One kiss is all it takes. Like, is she so wrong for that? No. But then also, like, he wasn't gagged by it. So that also gave me pause. That made me... I was like, now hold hold on. Let's press pause on the IMAX camera quickly. Because that was in IMAX. And, like, no one's ever told me. If, like, some random old lady kissed me on the lips and then ran into smoke to die... That's a crazy sentence. <laughs> that that typical relatable like situation when that happens. Oh yeah, but he's so unfazed by it, which scared me a bit. Okay, so in, when, in Finnick's interview, when he's talking about Annie, he goes, if I die in that arena, the last thing that I'll be thinking about is your lips touching mine. So does that have any correlation to what Mags does? A Finnick, Annie... And Mags in an open relationship? She's their mentor. You don't see Hamish kissing Katniss on the lips like that. No, 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 no. So what's going on? We could probably find out in the books. <laughs> Someone explained it to me and I don't know what it is. And like, I remember mm. like being like, hold up. Everybody go mute. Okay, fine. Stop asking. The fanfic was Finnick and Hamish. Oh my God. Oh my god. Did you hear that? What was that? We well, you kept asking about it, so I It's like it, it it all like comes into place of like the obsession with Hamish, really. My obsession with Hamish? Yeah. Well, yes. Full stop and <laughs> <laughs> Like, I have nothing else to say. But do you realize when Effie pulls Hamish's name, she has like a sigh within her voice. Yeah. She like goes like, she goes like, Hamish hey, Abernathy. Do you reckon she's doing that like, oh my God, my oomph is going to be in the Hunger Games? Or is she doing it because she knows Peter's going to volunteer? Right. What's the answer? If I was her, I'd just say Peter. 
Nikita. She could say whoever she wanted, really. Like, she could have... She could... <gasps> Conspiracy theory. The first Hunger Games, she was in on it, and she picked Primrose. Primrose Everdeen. What if she was in on it with Peta, Hamish, and Peter. the rebels to say Hamish, so Peta would volunteer so that Hamish could start the rebellion behind the scenes? No, you're crazy for that because, <laughs> wait, whoa. The timeline of them getting picked to the Hunger Games starting, the Rebels must have had that plan in motion, but it's like, how would they know? Were they planning it while they were on like their like victory tour? Do you know what I mean? I guess. I just think... Like, on the victory tour, they didn't know that that was what the third quarter quote was going to be. Actually, no, maybe they did because Plutarch came up with the idea. Oh. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Like, we would know that if we read the books. <laughs> we would know that if we paid attention. <laughs> what I want to point out a little bit earlier in the movie, when she, Snow is literally just, like, hopping out of her house. He was so intimidating in that moment. I'm like, you ate that. Like, he's a stunt queen. I keep saying President Snow is a stunt queen. Like, he doesn't do red roses because everyone does red roses. He's like, I'm going to do white roses. But then also, like, when he puts the white roses on the floor, like, after the bombing of um, District 13, like, Gagged. he loves a stunt. The weird, weirdest thing he says in this scene, so they go through this whole scene where he's like, you're a bad example. And he's like, he's like yelling at her. He's like, don't lie to me. Then he, then she goes, I'll convince them that Peta and Katniss are in love. And he goes, no, convince me weird weird old man obsessed with teenagers in love weird he was like i don't believe the ship i don't mm -mm. believe it he's like i don't believe it's canon no you and gail are canon and he pulls up the receipts he's like was this you guys kissing it's like is this you right here <laughs> this you <laughs> was this you defending him at the at the pole oh when we talk about that when we talk about old tom cruise coming in to whack Gail and Katniss stands up to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I still don't understand that, that like three victors had to come up and be like, stop. Yeah. For him to be like, oh, like maybe I shouldn't kill the very recent victors of district 12. And like the whole reason why they're in district 12 anyways, because Katniss was rebelling and inspiring everyone. And he just whacks her and he's like, oh, like, I didn't know who you are. Do you not own it uh, like a TV? Like your little holographic TV? I thought everyone had them. The way that Katniss had to pull up and be like, Stop. Don't, don't talk, talk to me. Loser lame as wanna be. be. Like, oh, totally. totally. Or like, Hamish comes in, I'm like, My man, my man, my man. And then Peter comes in, I'm like, Ugh. Do you know what I mean? It's like, ugh, you just wanted to be included. Like, you're not, you're not adding anything. You're a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm not. I'm just. I need to protect my man. And I need to protect my peace. I need to protect my man, Peta, and we need to move some hatred towards Gail because something needs to happen there. Because we have nearly, we have not talked about this man enough in this video. So let's talk about it. He's getting dirty, getting it done, clocking into his shift, clocking out. It's not his fault that he falls in love with Katniss, who ends up being this like mega superstar doing a PR relationship. But then he gets mad that Katniss is doing PR relationships. At that point, I'm like, oh, you're pissing me off. It's like, can you not recognize that Katniss needs to do her little PR relationship here? Well, the thing is that he doesn't realize that like Snow and the Capitol already knows that Gale is a loved one of Katniss. If Katniss does not comply mm. with what the Capitol wants, which is the love PR relationship, then Gail will be sniped. Yep. It, honestly, at the beginning of the tour, they're both being absolutely horrid to her because Gail is being like, do you love me? Like, uh, like he's a pick me. Like she just survived her, the, the hunger games. And he's like, but do you like me though? Peta is literally like, don't talk to me. Like none of it is real. You're just like, we're, you're, we're just trying to survive, right? It's like, she can't do anything. She can't do anything. Can't do shit. She can't have shit. Like she has to deal with these like two men. They want answers from her. She's like, babe, I just was fighting for my life. I was literally trying to come back home to my sister and now everybody's trying to get my coochie. Right. Pussy too bomb. Pussy too bomb. It's like that Nicki Minaj line where she's like, he said the pussy top five dead or alive. And she made sure I, she was alive. Katniss is with Lenny Kravitz in the TLC music video, right? That room that looks like a fucking TLC music video. So Katniss is standing there looking snatched, mind you, talking to Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz gets 
whacked. Pushed. And then like, she's supposed to be like, oh, time to start the Hunger Games, I guess. Goes up the tube, aspect ratio change. Right ass scene. She's adjusting her eyes to light. We're adjusting our eyes and to light. And it's like light. spinning around. That if I saw, I didn't see it in IMAX and maybe that's my biggest regret ever. So she's looking around. She's looking for Peter. 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 Peter, where are you? Peter, the horse is here. And like, she's like looking around this fuck ass, like Kesha arena, the TikTok arena. And then the countdown's like, turn nine. And then Jennifer Lawrence said, let me swipe my face card real quick. She changes her reaction. She's like. <sighs> yeah, right. She goes like. <sighs> yeah. With the curtain bangs. Right when she came up, she was like this. Then like she starts running to the thing, gets the like her little bow and arrow. Finnick, do you like my Cartier? I saw my wrist check. Hey Katniss, you look kind of like accessoryless over there. Good thing we're allies, right? See, when you're the it girls, you're the it girls. And like he, like the casting as well. I... <laughs> We, d we don't know what the source material described him as, but that was a perfect casting. I can't think of like another person that would match this character that I've never read about better. Yeah, I've never heard a description of him, but I can't imagine anyone better. The fog was just, just nasty. And mind you, that's the first thing that happens. When was the blood rain? The blo was the blood rain before the fog? They do say at some points, like when they work out it's a clock, they're like, first hour was the fog, then monkeys, then da da da, then blood rain. I'm like, bold of you to assume that you had the first three issues. That's what I'm saying. And one, okay, so you know how in the Hunger Games I was talking about how I was like, what? The fireballs came out so quick. In this one, I believe the same thing. They barely have the, the tributes in Iraq before they're sending poisonous fog to burn them to death. I want to see them fight each other, not fight the earth. Monkeys to be round two is like... We've established that I would have given up by now for sure. But like if I was Peter, Peter, and then these fuck ass monkeys were roaring at me. Like the introduction of that where he literally turns around. Ah! It screams in his face. I'm like, where's the class? It's so unserious that the monkeys like got introduced like that. And they're like all around them. It's kind of like one of those scenes where it's like, it's right behind me, isn't it? Peter was literally like, oh, it's right behind me, isn't it? And like, what are the monkeys? Like in the first movie, you see the like dog thing that he creates. It's not a normal dog. It's like a little bit different, right? It's bigger kind of grosser looking but these monkeys just look like monkeys that are like mean vicious they're just mad they're, ma they're mad as hell they came up in that arena mad as hell but then also like what are they made of like billy eilish what was i made for what were they made of is there like a capital zoo that they're put in but they're not real the dogs aren't real i know they're not real but do like do the surviving monkeys get placed somewhere afterwards i think they just disappear I wanted to see the blood rain. I wanted to see the blood rain happening. When Joanna comes out, she's covered in blood. She's like, and I'm covered in blood, but not my blood. It's raining hot, sticky blood. Are we going to talk about how Joanna's one of the best characters of the series? Yes, we are. Joanna, like, from the moment she steps on screen, like, gags them so hard. Like, she literally just strips in front of them. And then it only gets better from there. She's so upset and so outwardly upset about everything that's going on her with that axe like obsessed i want to know how she won her games we could probably find that out <laughs> <laughs> but i also like how they each have their own signature weapon like i love that that's so anime oh, <laughs> period mm -hmm. i do love that i also love that phoenix signature weapon is the trident and he gets sent that in the games that he plays and it showcases how much the capital doesn't realize what people from district four actually use to hunt because they don't use tridents to hunt fish mm. they just send it to him because they think it looks cool and it does look cool that's the thing it looks badass so he makes it his signature thing because he's like i'm gonna do it for the people when he's like 
finding the monkeys and he's twirling that shit around. He doesn't need to be doing all that. Like he just needs to, uh, he could twirl me around. Yup. Um, but then Joanna says that she saved them for Katniss and Katniss is like, now what do you mean by that? Like explain, but she doesn't explain. But she like doesn't ask them to explain at all. She's like, she's like, that's weird. Anyway, TikTok is a, then the next scene is just like this. Why was like TikTok, TikTok? The scene of her being like TikTok, TikTok, and then Katniss is like, well, yes, TikTok. <laughs> like, Wyrus is a genius. Wyrus and Beatty, like, let's talk about it. Were they like fucking? That's what I mean. Like, what's their vibe? Katniss recognizes that it's a clock, and we have the whole explanation: different sectors for different things. The long tail, the cornucopias, the what? They spin the thing. They're like, okay, well, it's still a clock. And the lightning is still happening over there. So then Beatty comes up with the plan and they're going to run the wire. And Katniss is like, Peter, we should, Peter, we need to dip. Because she's kind of like, what the fuck? Like, we are a group of one, two, three, four, five. She's like, that's too many. That's too many. Like, we're going to have to kill them or they're going to have to kill us. The idea of alliances in the Hunger Games is like really wild. It, it does make sense, but the idea that you would make alliances with that many people just that you can make an alliance with one person, and that's about it. Because that Haymitch makes an alliance with one person within his game, I think. Oh, really? And how do you know about that? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe maybe I watched the fan made edit of Haymitch's story on YouTube.com. Might as well say goodbye now. Don't want it to come down to the two of us. I've got a few quick fire points and I'm going to go through them real quick because they're quick fire points. First one is like the guy in District 12 beating up Gail looks like old Tom Cruise. Next thing is when Katniss and Peter are in the Capitol, she's wearing these like K-pop socks, like K-pop music video socks. She could debut at SM. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finnick crunching the sugar cube. Right. Pissed me off a bit. Oh. I was like, I don't like the texture. I don't like the texture of that sound. Like, why are you crunching the sugar cube? Just suck on it. Suck on it, Finnick. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I said, Joanna, when she has the red in her fringe, mm -hmm. there's like a scene where she randomly has like red in the fringe. I'm like, oh, she is like, she looks so, she looks so good. But her hair's red throughout the entire movie. <laughs> like Joanna has like burgundy hair right and I knew that so we didn't read the books or watch the movies and we need to talk about the mastery of Beatty's plan so he's like we're gonna electrocute the girls and Beatty's like I don't know what it is about Beatty but every one of his lines I'm like yup when he's like ugh electrocuting tree minimal charring I agree with the line delivery especially in this callback to when Caesar is interviewing him and he's like the rule was invented by men so it certainly could be Unwritten. The quarter crow were written into law by men. Certainly it can be unwritten. Yes. Literally. It's like, wait, let's do like, let's have a beady off. Like who can do the best beady? <laughs> the rule was invented by men. So surely it can be re reversed by men. Like he's like the, uh, you ate me up there though. Like you really <laughs> like, you were training for this moment. Joanna digs the thing out of Katniss's arm. And then like Katniss is like, Peter. Peter! And then Finnick, like, does the thing again with the, like, remember who the real enemy is. Remember who the real enemy is. Which odd that he kept that on throughout the entire game. Like, I'm all about an accessory. I just feel like a bangle would fall off. Not, a, like, a cunty bangle like that. Like, that's, <laughs> like, if I had the, the Hamish bangle, the, the bangle that his boyfriend Hamish gave him. I'd be going up the bussy. Huh? The bangle. <laughs> the bangle up the bussy. Right. Right. No, you're, you're so right. And you should say it. Um, and then Katniss gets the claw and comes up. And then she's in the fucking ship. And then she's like, I want to go home. How's, how's home? And Gail's like, there is no District 12. This is Katniss laying down. She's like... And she serves. And then it changes the like thing into the bird. Oh wait, when she goes to Plutarch and she's like, what the fuck is going on? And he goes, this is the revolution. You are the Mockingjay. She's like, whoa. What? She's like, I'm just trying to fucking get by. The gaggings of like Katniss waking up in the ship and then Hamish, Plutarch and Finnick all talking to each other. The first time I watched that, yeah. 
I was like, whoa. I was like, and, and when the hell did you guys become friends? I'm like, when did you start umphing? Like, when did you become moots? Like, what's going on? When did this happen? It's like, and who the hell are they? Like, who the hell is Plutarch? At this point, I would have forgotten about him at that. Like, if I was her? Yeah. I'm like, who the hell is this? It is a big moment because we're, we're introduced to District 13 yeah. and we're like, this is the safe haven. But like, are we? 